Hello, my name is Kieran Murta, and I am a writer, and you join me here in my writing shed. Ooh, that's how writers roll, yeah. We live and work in sheds. Um, and I'm here today because I want to do something that I've been meaning to do for ages, which is to read an extract from a book I'm really proud of. It's a book I'm proud of because I wrote it. It's a book I'm proud of. I'm proud of lots of... I'm, I'm proud of all books. The fact that all books exist makes me proud. But this one makes me particularly proud because I wrote it. It's called The Incredible Diary of Finn Spencer. And this particular book is called Stunt Boy. There's a few books in the series. There's Megastar, Action Hero, and Prom King, uh, all coming out soon. But this one is the first. So I like reading from this because it's about a boy called Finn, who's quite like a lot of us. His days never normally go the way he plans them to. There's always things at the end which he wishes he'd said or done better. But it's too late now. Nothing he can do. Until he gets the diary this diary and it allows him to change his past and he writes down all the things he should have done all the things he wished he'd done better all the things he thought he should have said that would have made it look really cool and the next day when he goes into school that's what everybody believes actually happened so he goes from being kind of a normal kid to being incredible which is where the book gets the title um so i'm going to read to you from this um you don't have to like it i hope you do but uh, enjoy see you in a sec Look at that! He's standing up and holding a book. And there's a light above his head. What's it do? I don't know. Maybe if I have a good idea, it comes on. Who knows? It's never come on yet. This is the book I'm going to read to you. And before I do, let me explain to you what's happened so far in the story. Um, Finn has been really, really, really naughty. So naughty, in fact, that he's got taken out of school by his mum and dad. And uh, he's not too worried because he thinks, oh, I'll just use the diary to fix it all. I'll write that nobody remembers any of this. But for some reason, the diary doesn't work and everybody does remember this. It's a big problem. So he, he's still in massive, massive trouble. And his mum and his dad across with him and his little sister Ellie thinks this is hilarious, which is where this starts. When I went downstairs this morning, mum and dad were still cross with me. And Ellie, my sister, was grinning like a clown at a custard pie chucking contest. To make matters worse, Ellie was being extra polite to mum and dad, which only made me look extra naughty by comparison. And that was unfair. I hadn't even done anything wrong today. It was only nine o'clock. Once we'd all had breakfast, Ellie offered to unload the dishwasher. Mum shook her head and said that as I was the one who'd been naughty, I should do it. That was just perfect. And all morning, every time Ellie offered to be helpful, mum ended up giving me another job to do. And Ellie knew it. She really made the most of it. Shall I, um, shall I clean the garden? No, Finn can do it. Shall I, uh, wash up? No, Finn can do it. Shall I, uh, clean the car? No, Finn can do it. I wanted to go back upstairs, cover my head with a duvet and pretend today was not happening. But no such luck. I forgot it was Gran's birthday and we were all going to her house for a party. I had to get changed into something appropriate, which we all know is mum speak, something hideously embarrassing. By the time she'd finished, I ended up looking like a butler. Ellie came downstairs, dressed as Princess Jasmine from some cartoon she'd just watched. Her mum said nothing! I wasn't sure how that counted as something appropriate, but apparently it did. On the way to Gran's house, Ellie asked Dad if she could choose the music because she'd been such a good girl. She was really rubbing it in. We drove for an hour and a half listening to the new Charlie Dimples album. Her favourite song, My Squishy Wishy, is just the worst. I ended up knowing all the words, even though I didn't want to. By the time we got to Gran's house, my ears had melted. I mean, what is a squishy-wishy anyway? Is it a new sweet? Um, a dead hedgehog? A particularly juicy face pimple? True question, it's probably all three. Gran had invited loads of her friends to the party, so the garden was full of old people dancing badly to rubbish music. These people knew how to party. Not. I was about to liven things up and put on some of my own music when Gran stopped me and put on a song called Stairway to Heaven instead. It's a song she seemed to love, but it seemed a bit inconsiderate of a party full of old people, if you ask me. But apparently it didn't matter what I thought because I wasn't there to enjoy myself. Mum said I was lucky to be there at all considering I was grounded. At least I could help out, which we all know is mum speak for be her personal slave. Mum handed me a plate of tuna sandwiches and told me to offer them round. I spent the next half hour trying to force feed old people sandwiches while being stalked by Gran's terrifying cat, Mr Yummy Whiskers. In the end, I lured Mr Yummy Whiskers behind the shed and gave him the lot. She thought that was the end of my jobs. She was wrong. Mum took me into the kitchen and told me to do the washing up. Stop there! Ellie was doing nothing. Worse than nothing, in fact. She was showing all the old people had Princess Jasmine beds. For some reason, they loved it. Honestly. 
the washing up took ages, and by the time I'd finished, my hands looked like a pair of prunes. I headed outside just in time for party games. Who knew old people still play party games? And not party games for old people like Whose Teeth Are These? or Pass the Walking Stick or Shave My Chin Beard. No! Real party games like Pass the Parcel and Charade. Charade took forever. There was a film called Gone with the Wind that nobody could get. Apparently it's from old and old and olden times. I'd have just made a farting noise and waved. <laughs> After the birthday cake, which had so many candles on top it looked like it was on fire, it was time for Gran's birthday presents. Mum and Dad always bought the present and just put mine and Ellie's name on it. I had nothing to worry about. But after they handed over the gift from all of us, Ellie announced that she got an extra special surprise. And she had made one of the most horrible things I have ever seen. A homemade birthday card for Gran. It turned out she'd also made up a poem and written it inside the card. Everyone stood and smiled as she read it out loud. Granny's nice. Granny's sweet. Granny's lovely. Granny's kind. Granny's pretty. Granny's smiley wily. It didn't even rhyme. And smiley wily isn't a word. I blame Charlie Dimples for that. If he can ever hit some with my squishy wishy, is it any wonder little girls are making up words left, right and centre? But it didn't matter what I thought, apparently. It was a thought that counted, and the old people sucked it up. Ellie is such a swat. Just then, Mr Yummy Whiskers staggered out from behind the shed and threw up the whole tray full of tuna sandwiches I'd given him. I don't think anyone realised it was my fault, but unluckily I had to clear it up anyway. While we were in the car on the way home, listening to another hour and a half of Charlie Dimples, Ellie waved a five-pound note in my face. Gran gave it to me to say thank you for such a thoughtful birthday card, she told me. That is so unfair! I should be the one getting paid! I was the one who'd done all the work at the party! I was still on the wire just to what a squishy wishy was when we got home, and I was really fed up. Before the day could get any worse, I decided to come up here to my bedroom. I really wish I'd remembered Gran's birthday and written her a poem this morning. At least my poem would have rhymed! Can't be that hard to write something she'd have been impressed by. Something like, Grandma, you smell... Of lavender and rose. I love your hair. I love your toes. You bring me such supreme delight every time you kiss me good night. There! That's worth five pounds of anyone's money. Too late now, though, isn't it? Maybe next year. Ellie's rich and I'm in Grand's bad books. I catch my life! <laughs> and look, he's sitting down again. Not really. I just have a chair. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you can find out more about me at my website, which will be appearing in a moment, or perhaps underneath, if I'm clever enough to make that happen. And you can ask me to come to your school, your library, your bookshop, your sweet shop. I like sweet shops. Ask me to come to a sweet shop, and I will happily read to you from my books there as well. Um, there's loads more coming from me, so please keep a look at And if you like this, share it, tell your friends, and... See you soon.